All right, ready to dive in. We've got a fascinating deep dive ahead of us today. You've sent in a whole bunch of Peter Harrison's articles on AI going back a good 15 years. Seems like you want to really get past all the hype and headlines, huh? Absolutely. And Harrison is a great guy to have on this journey. What I find really striking is how much he got right, even back in the early 2000s, when AI felt more like science fiction than reality. Yeah, talk about ahead of the curve. Like in Rise of the Immortals from 2005, he's talking about self-driving cars, AI making big financial decisions, even Amazon using drones for deliveries. I mean, come on. Back then, that was Jetsons level stuff. Right. And what I find really insightful is how Harrison moved past that whole sci-fi fear of robots taking over. Yeah. He zeroed in on the real game changer with AI, the economic advantage it gives corporations. Hi, this is Peter Harrison. Um, I've been the one who put to this uh, put this video together. Um, I basically put all my work on artificial intelligence into Notebook AI from Google. Uh, that was used to create the audio for this uh, the podcast example, uh, and then I used Hitter, which is a AI service to create uh, video from audio, um, and just basically to create this little demonstration of what's possible using these tools. Okay, thanks. So less Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator and more like Wall Street on steroids. Exactly. Harrison argues that AI software, because it can be copied endlessly and keeps getting refined, gives companies this huge edge. He actually calls it algorithmic immortality. Algorithmic immortality. Okay, that's both impressive and kind of creepy. Yeah. But it's not just about efficiency, right? Didn't he also talk about how AI can do things humans just flat out can't? like making decisions in milliseconds based on mountains of data. Absolutely. And he gives a concrete example in his 2008 article, The Algorithmic Advantage. He dives into how companies like Amazon use AI to predict what you and I are going to buy before we even buy it. It's like they know us better than we know ourselves. Right. And it leads to this feedback loop where their AI gets even better at predicting and personalizing, which means more sales for them. And, well, we end up more and more stuck in their ecosystem. Wow. OK, so it's not just about efficiency. It's about understanding human desire better than we do. That is both fascinating and a little unnerving. But it goes beyond just online shopping, right? Oh, absolutely. Harrison argues that AI's ability to analyze these massive data sets in like milliseconds gives it this decision-making edge we can't even touch. He talks about high-frequency trading, right? In his 2012 article, The Speed of Thought, those algorithms are making thousands of trades a second, which is just mind-blowing. It's like having a super-powered brain on Wall Street. Exactly. And that's really just the tip of the iceberg. What Harrison's work makes us ask is what happens when AI starts outperforming us in even more complex jobs. Yeah. Not just these repetitive tasks, but roles that require creativity and critical thinking. And that's where things get really interesting and maybe a little bit scary. Which brings us to what feels like the core of all this AI talk, deep learning. Harrison keeps coming back to it, and I get it. It's how AI actually, you know, learns. But I got to admit, I hit a bit of a wall trying to wrap my head around it. Is there a way to explain it without, like, needing a degree in computer science? You bet. And you're right. Deep learning is key to understanding both what AI can do and what it can't, at least not yet. Think of it this way. And it's an analogy Harrison uses, too. Imagine teaching a kid to recognize a cat. You wouldn't hand them a dictionary definition, right? Pointy ears, whiskers, meows. No, you'd show them a ton of pictures. Just cat pictures all day long. Pretty much. Different breeds, cats sleeping, cats playing, you name it. Eventually, the kid just gets it. They develop this intuition. Deep learning is kind of like that it's all about recognizing patterns, but instead of a few dozen pictures, it's crunching through mountains of data. So we're not telling the machine every little rule lose. It's more like we're feeding it a fire hose of information and letting it figure things out on its own. Exactly. And this was a huge deal when it emerged. Harrison talks about this in his 2016 article, The Learning Machine. It's like instead of us telling the machine what to think, we're teaching it how to learn. It revolutionized the field. Okay, so that makes sense. But then Harrison throws in this curveball, he says our dogs learn faster than AI. Like, hide a treat once, the dog gets it. AI needs to see that treat hidden a thousand times, maybe a million. So is this deep learning thing not all it's cracked up to be? That is the million dollar question. And Harrison gets at this really interesting point in his 2017 paper, The Feeling Machine. He says, yeah, deep learning is powerful, but it's missing something crucial that our brains have. What? Like emotions? Exactly. Emotions and the feedback loops they create. We learn from pleasure and pain. Those feelings, they stick with us, they shape our memories, and they influence how we make decisions in the future. 
AI, as it stands now, doesn't have that. So, like, imagine AlphaGo, that AI that beat the world champ at Go. If it actually felt the thrill of winning, the sting of losing, maybe that'd change how it learned. That's a fascinating thought, right? Instead of just calculating moves, you could start developing strategies based on the emotional feedback of winning and losing. And Harrison takes it even further with this really insightful comparison to Alzheimer's patients. He talks about how their inability to form new memories, to have those experiences really sink in, yeah. directly affects their ability to do even basic things. Wow, so that whole feedback loop memory thing, it's not just some abstract concept, it's fundamental to how we operate. Exactly. And it's something that AI, for all its power, hasn't quite cracked yet. Okay, so AI, it's got these incredible learning capabilities. That's some pretty big limitations, too, at least for now. But how does this all play out in our lives? What did Harrison see happening as AI keeps evolving? Well, he didn't mince words. Disruption. He saw big changes coming, and he wasn't afraid to say so. Like back in his 2015 article, Immortals versus the Precariat. It's actually kind of eerie how accurate he was. Right. He predicted bookstores would struggle, the postal service, even some pretty skilled jobs, he said, would be affected by automation. And looking around now, well, he wasn't wrong. Not at all. And it wasn't just about, you know, robots replacing factory workers. Mm -hmm. Harrison talked about AI changing white collar jobs, too. Lawyers, accountants, even some medical diagnoses, he said, could be done by algorithms. It's this unsettling thought that AI could automate so many jobs people rely on. It is. And that leads to what I thought was one of his most, well, radical ideas, this whole universal basic income thing. Right. The UBI. It sounds like a huge jump from like self-checkout lines to needing government support because robots took our jobs. But Harrison actually made a pretty compelling economic argument for it. Yeah, he painted this picture where corporations are humming along with way fewer human workers thanks to AI, and that sounds great for efficiency, but then what happens when a big chunk of people don't have ev jobs to earn money? If nobody can buy anything, the whole system falls apart. Exactly. Harrison was saying, look, if we reach a point where AI makes human labor almost obsolete, we might need a universal basic income, like a safety net, to keep the economy going. It's a radical idea, but it makes you think especially when you realize even free market folks like Milton Friedman considered it at some point. So we've got powerful AI on one hand, but it's got these flaws we talked about, and then this potential for huge job displacement on the other. What about Harrison's predictions about the timeline for all this? In his early work, he seemed pretty sure AI would outperform human intelligence pretty darn soon. It's interesting, you see this shift in his thinking over the years. Early on, he was bolder, even throughout a specific year, 2020 in a 2014 email. And while 2020 came and went, no HAL 9000 yet, thankfully. So <laughs> no robot overlords tomorrow. But seriously, what's the main thing we should take away from all this? For me, it's that Harrison was really onto something with this idea that general intelligence, that moment when AI surpasses us, it's not this one dramatic event. It's not about AI being smarter across the board. Mm -hmm. It's more like AI will probably keep exceeding us in specific areas while lagging behind in others. It's not going to be this like sudden takeover, more like this gradual shift. OK, yeah, that makes sense. So it's less about if and more about when and how we adapt. It's a lot to think about. It really is. And for me, what makes Harrison's work so important is how much he pushes us to think about AI ethically, not just, you know, the cool technology part, even if we aren't facing down sentient robots tomorrow, these questions he raises, they're becoming more and more relevant every day. Absolutely. Like, what rights should AI have if it becomes conscious? How do we make sure AI is used ethically, especially by those powerful corporations he talked about? Those aren't just sci-fi questions anymore. Exactly. And that's something I really appreciate about Harrison's work. He constantly reminds us that this isn't some abstract debate. It's about the world we're building right now. Right. Because AI isn't off in the future, it's already here. It's in our phones, our cars. It's shaping our choices in ways we don't even realize. Well, that's about all the time we have for this deep dive, but we'd love to hear your thoughts. What resonated with you? What surprised you? Hit us up on social media and keep the conversation going.